All right, so we're getting ready to go. Got our uh, bait cooler, some bait boxes, some squid in there, and then some some parts. And we're gonna pick uh, these two reels, these two reels, and these two reels to troll with. We're gonna bring this longer one to uh, throw a lure at anything we see and uh, see what we get today. So this is a beautiful, nice, calm day. It, it's about 50 degrees when we start out, but it gets to about 70 degrees uh, later in the day. As we're moving out, I just kind of like to enjoy the scenery, but I'll describe the rods and reels that we use for the day uh, since it's kind of hard to tell where they're sitting in the stands. Uh, in the back, we have two bent rods. These are ordered through eatmytackle.com. They're a, a heavier duty rod, six foot, 80 to 100 pound mono rating. These are matched with uh, Shimano reels. They're the Shimano 50 LRSA re two speed reels. And uh, they're very nice for trolling out of the back of the boat. One uh, long distance. Uh, plug on the top and then we also put the deep diver we use a, a Magnum uh, XL 30 uh, to deep dive in particular they seem to have enjoyed the pink ones we also then use two star rods aerial series EX 3080C6 this is a medium duty rod it's got all double based eyelets. It's a rated 30 to 80 pound line. This is matched on the Avid MXL 5.8 reel, which is a nice bait casting style, uh, style reel. Then we have two Pen Ally rods. They're 6 foot, 50 to 100 pound mono rating, 65 to 130 pound braid. They uh, have a roller on the tip as well as a roller on uh, just at the reel. These are matched with uh, the uh, Penn International 12 VI single speed reels. I have had more trouble with the smaller pen rods and reels, particularly the rods with the smaller single base eyelets. The ceramic tends to pop out and the eyelets tend to break. And uh, so I've gone to these heavier duty rods and you'll notice from last year's videos that all of the rods and all the reels are significantly upgraded. Uh, so the one thing I've learned in this type of fishing is that you really need heavy duty equipment. Our line is a 100 pound braided fluorescent yellow by fierceness. As you look at the spread it's a little bit hard to tell but we have two rods just next to the console that are based on a holder outrigger. It's a stainless steel uh, L shape that uh, just sets the rods out further. In the back of the boat at the gunnels are the Penn International 12 VIs on the uh, Penn Alley rods. And then in the back are the uh, bent rods with the Shimano uh, reels on them. The outrigger reels have a bullet type uh, lure on them. The uh, gunnel in the back has a tuna buster kind of double squid um, lure. The two reels on the transom have the plug way far back and then the deep diver uh, goes down about 30 feet. All right, so the clicker starts going off. I notice the rod moving and I go to start reeling in. I'm going to bring the engines to um, from about 10 knots to about 2 knots of trolling so we don't uh, tangle our lines. The fish is on the reel. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, gaff out and uh, bring it in. So this is the uh, 
first of two Wahoo that we get on this trip. Uh, this is a trip out to Boomvang, which is about 125 miles out. It takes uh, four or five hours to get out there. It's a little bit faster going back because of the uh, currents, uh, but it does take a little bit of time. So once you're on station, you want to go ahead and, and start fishing. Fortunately, every time I've gone out there, it's been pretty productive. We've gotten blackfin tuna. We've gotten uh, dorado, mahi-mahi. And uh, now we have uh, Wahoo, so it's a, it's a nice place to go. It takes some effort to get out there. As you can see, there's uh, quite a few extra uh, containers of gas. Uh, the boat will make it out there and back on the tank that it has, but you never know how much gas you're going to need to troll or you get sidetracked or those sorts of things. It's just not worth the possibility of running out of gas. This turned out to be a pretty nice sized Wahoo and uh, once we get it in the boat we're ready to start fishing again. Those Wahoo steaks should be nice on the grill. I don't have my first mate with me, so of course I've got to clean the boat myself. I'm going to keep it nice and neat, not let it uh, get too uh, slippery. It'd be easy to fall on uh, the slime that comes off. And so it take a few minutes to spray it all down. Didn't take long after we got started to get a hit on the aft port gunnel. Uh, this is the uh, Penn International that is running the two squid uh, tuna buster type um, lure. It runs close to the surface, tends to pop out a little bit. They are a little bit weighted, uh, but uh, pretty quick we get a, a hit on that rod. And then as we bring it in, we actually lose this fish. Fortunately, there were hits on two other rods as well. One was a big bull mai mai. Unfortunately, the line caught somehow on the on the reel and he snapped off. But uh, if you watch the video, you can see him jump actually out. It's out of ways there, but um, he jumps up when he, when he shakes it free. And he's got that big plug in his mouth. Uh, so we're, uh, I think this was a tuna actually that we had on this one and we were bringing it in and we almost got it to the side of the boat and it popped off but then I checked the other two reels, the one with the Mahi Mahi, um, I chose, that was the farthest one out so I chose to bring in the other one which had a Wahoo on it. It's always exciting when you get multiple hits on the rods. Uh, you know you're doing something right. You're in the right spot. You're um, using the right chum. Um, it's just disappointing when you pull it in and it's, uh, the the fish is shaken off of the lure like that. So check the other ones. Uh, the one on the left I think got bound up and that's the one that uh, had the big uh, my my on it. And then uh, this one we should be able to uh, pull in the wahoo. It ends up uh, bringing it around so that we can uh, pull it in off of the uh, the side I believe. It's pretty uh, heavy line on the leader. I think it's oh, 200 pound leader and so it's thick enough you can grab the line with your hand and not cut your hand or burn it. Um, and again um, bring the uh, the gaff around so that we can uh, gaff the fish and bring it in.
So this is another nice size Wahoo. It's, uh, what is that, uh, five gas can cans long. And again, we were able to uh, cut both of these fish into nice steaks. Uh, this has supplied us with fish for an entire year, really, with the uh, snapper catch as well as the tuna. Uh, it's been a really good fishing year. I cannot wait to get back out on the water it's uh, cold weather now, but now's the time to get all of our equipment ready, start working on uh, uh, lures, lines, leaders, upgrade rods, uh, get the boat serviced, and uh, hopefully have another year where we are able to bring in uh, some nice fish, have some time on the water, invite friends down, and overall just a, a nice way to spend the summer I really enjoy it and uh, I've really enjoyed this boat it's been a good boat the right size not too big doesn't burn too much fuel I feel fairly safe in this boat as you can see I feel like uh, I can run out and come back in the dark we did put the Garmin radar on so we have radar and uh, as well we have a uh, t-top uh, uh, light that helps us when we need it.